Okay, we'll start with this. The latest as it pertains to Australia's own Taylor Robertson per Premier Boxing AU, we're excited to welcome Taylor Robertson to the PBS banner in what is set to be her biggest fight to date. We're motivated to guide this young talent to a world title and can't wait to see her on our debut show with 7 Plus on March 27th. Join us for our opening press conference on Wednesday, the 21st of February, live and free at the Brisbane Powerhouse. Seems like Taylor Robertson's making friends all over the place. Last year, she formed some kind of a partnership with Lee Baxter Promotions north of the border up there in Canada. Not much materialized from that, though. Not much happened. And now it seems she's formed a new partnership with a new promoter in her native Australia, Taylor Robertson, a talented young super flyweight campaigning at super flyweight. That's where unbeaten up-and-comers like Liana Cruz and Shannon Ryan, Virginia Fuchs, where Taylor Robertson campaigns. This is a very deep division, a deep weight class, where the world titles are split four ways between four separate fighters, four separate champions. Irma Garcia. She's got the IBF. Ashley Gonzalez. She's got the WBC. Mizuki Hirita. She's got the WBO. Clara Lascurat. She's got the WBA. This is a very deep division, very deep weight class, where Taylor Robertson has been campaigning. I'm going to assume that she's going to keep campaigning there moving forward meows, meows, sporting meows, a professional meows. record of nine wins with one loss no draws two knockouts two recorded knockouts having never been knocked out in 10 professional bouts that lone defeat came at the hands of her countrywoman and veteran fighter shotgun shannon o'connell well over a year ago it seems that taylor was biting off a bit more than she could chew there but it was a good learning experience she has since rebounded off that loss way back there in october of 2021 she has fought six times since then won six times since then she's on a six fight winning streak having last seen action in september of last year she fought two times last year three times the year before that. So she has been busy. She's been fighting. Taylor Robertson, who when I first saw her was best described as a finesse fighting kind of fighter, not an artillery fighter, more of a mover, a jabber, a thinker, a thinking man's fighter. But after that Shannon O'Connell fight, there was a noticeable change in Taylor Robertson, likely because of what costed her the Shannon O'Connell fight. She was outworked by Shannon O'Connell. Even though she didn't get banged up or beat up, even though she didn't get ragdolled, she did get outworked. So after that fight, you started seeing more output from Taylor Robertson. You started seeing her countering more, letting her hands go, putting punches together. Showing more of a work rate that she can move, she can move, we can see that she can move. But it's not enough to just move. It's not enough to go in there and just show defensive highlights. You want to balance that out with some offense as well, some counters, some combinations. Yeah. yeah what it is is yeah, the transition yeah. from an amateur style to a pro style. The difference between the amateurs and the pros. Well, in the amateurs, you're fighting for points, but in the pros, you want to show spite. You want to do some damage. Damage. Put a dent in your opponent. Notice, ever since the Shannon O'Connell fight, a conscious effort from Taylor to let her hands go more, capitalize off those countering opportunities. You're faster than the other girl? We'll use that to put punches in there, put punches together, because it's not enough to just move around. Got a box and punch. She seems to have inked a pact with a local promotional outfit down there in her native Australia, set to be returning to action real soon. And according to them, she's on the cusp of fighting for an alphabet title. The question is, which one? The WBA, the WBA? WBC, the WBO, or the IBF. She's on a six-fight winning streak. Four titles, four different champions to challenge, four different paths to choose from. She's only 25 years old. She's a young fighter, but she's amassed a good level of experience across 10 bouts so far. She's returning soon. It's good to see that. The proliferation of talented up-and-comers in today's super flyweight division will lend itself to the division's profile because super flyweight is often overlooked. It's not as talked about as 118, 122, or 126. But with Taylor Robertson in Australia, Shannon Ryan in the UK, Leanna Cruz in America, things are heating up. Men's flyweight news, some interesting comments from former IBF flyweight champion Sonny Edwards who says, I've had more positive comments losing than from winning all of my boring fights. It's because he showed hard. I've probably had more positive comments losing in a good fight than I have from winning in all of my boring fights, Edwards told Boxing News. 
news. It meant something being part of an event that people genuinely cared about. Either side, they really wanted me to win, or they really wanted Bam to win, or they really wanted to find out how the fight went. Every other time I've boxed, there's been something happening in boxing that night, bigger, and I felt like that week. Especially that fight night. I feel like it kind of took over the boxing world, and rightfully so. When two young fighters put up their O's in their world titles, everything is up for stake. It should be celebrated, as it was. And it is. Is a familiar theme with John Ryder traveling to Mexico and Sonny Edwards traveling to America in fights that perhaps they were not favored to win, but they still fought their asses off anyway. Did their best anyway. It takes courage to do that. It takes moxie. It takes gusto. Something that the sport often feels like it's missing in this postmodern era of boxing. A sense of gratitude from the fans, the paying customers, the people who pay to be there and want to see a show, and the fighters that put the show on. Not just the guy that wins, but the guy that loses too. In this instance, Sonny Edwards. He fought his ass off. I grew up and came through seeing flyweight world champions fighting at 7.30, 8 p.m. on the undercard of a big night's boxing, Edwards said. I've now become the big nights of boxing, and I'll do everything I can to do to be there again and again. Spoke to Eddie and Frank Smith. They're on the same page as me. They think my stock has risen. They think more people want to see me fight than ever, ever before. Also, they know I'm a very easy person to make a fight with. I'm very professional. I turn up. I do everything that is asked of me. I do more than what is asked of me, really. So I'm looking forward to the future. I still feel like there's years and years and years ahead of me. Achievements and accolades. Genuinely being part of an event that the boxing world felt that's what I see. He's just become the biggest name at Flyweight. Second only to Bam Rodriguez, who's set to be leaving Flyweight. Thus, the division, if Sonny Edwards so chooses to stay there, he would easily be the most recognizable face and the most recognizable fighter at Flyweight in the absence of Bam Rodriguez. That has its perks. Genuinely being part of an event that the boxing world felt, that's what I seek. That's what I again and again go after. I just want the fights that people actually care about happening because for pretty much 19 of my fights 20 of my fights maybe it was the Sonny Edwards show and people didn't really care because they were expecting me to win do you know what I mean I know exactly what he means it's that air of spontaneity it's not really knowing the answer but wanting to find out when you put two guys in a ring and the answer isn't quite clear thus you have to tune in to find out as opposed to safe fights and foregone conclusion fights why would anybody get excited about that you know how it's gonna end reflecting on the future Sonny says just put me straight back in the deep end Sonny showed his quality in that Bam Rodriguez fight I picked Bam to win and I picked Bam to win by way of knockout or technical knockout late into the fight but it's not because Sonny's not a good fighter he's a good fighter he's a damn good fighter and what people found out that night is it's not just that he's a good fighter he's got heart he's got courage he's got durability and you can sell that I feel I've got loads of options, Edwards told Boxing News genuinely. Not this fight, but my fight before. I actually weighed less than a kilo above light flyweight, 108. I know I can make the light flyweight limit. I was doing that comfortably. It's probably where I can really drop down especially and look to fight. As the IBF champion no longer, obviously, I think I've had a good regard with the IBF. Also, a fight with me probably makes it a lot easier to make because it's a much bigger purse for these sorts of fights with someone like me who's already been built up and been in big events headlined however many fights and who can sell and market a fight quite well i could do that with regards to the previous era and the emphasis on the o staying an unbeaten fighter as a result of the floyd mayweather campaign to surpass rocky marciano's 49 and 0 record that spell is wearing off the fight fans are caring less and less about unbeaten fighters and fighters who want to fight, whether they have an unblemished record or not. Fight like you want to win. I feel like Sonny Edwards did that in spite of losing. I feel like Sonny Edwards showed he's made out of some tough stuff because it took a lot from Bam to finally get him out of there. Still, I think, depending on what Bam does, I don't know if he's going to stay or if he's going to go up. There's options still down here at Flyweight. 
I'd go anywhere. I feel like everything is an option. It's just the conversations. Eddie Hearn's still my promoter. So whatever conversation he wants to have with me about what's next... Edwards rejected the notion that he needed a morale booster for his next fight. You know, an easy one. A rebound fight. Real fights only, Edwards said. I don't need the confidence boosters. I don't need the stepovers in between. Just put me straight back in the deep end. Losing to one great fighter doesn't make me any less of a great fighter. Only on a slightly different day, things could have gone a slightly different way. Whether that would have went my way? I don't know. That's yet to be seen. Oh. Yeah, man. I'm still very confident in my future and my career prospects. I know how I felt in there today, and I don't think I was completely outclassed. I just think that things didn't go right for me. Maybe on a night it needed to. There's talk of Bam Rodriguez moving up from flyweight up to super flyweight to take on Gallo Estrada. That's a very big fight at Superfly. If he does, he'll vacate the two alphabet titles he just won at flyweight, and maybe Sonny can stay there. Maybe Sonny can pick them up, because if not, nothing else, he would fast become the biggest name at the weight in the absence of BAM. Being a somebody has its perks. When you're the most recognizable face at the weight, while that does paint a lot of targets on your back, that also gives you leverage over your potential opponents. And I think the moral of this story, like what we saw with John Ryder versus Canelo Alvarez or John Ryder versus Jaime Munguia, it's not just about winning. I mean, of course winning is important, but it's not just about winning. It's not just about the outcome because Teofimo, Him. he quote unquote won his last fight. Right. Shakur Stevenson, he quote unquote won his last fight. Right. But you tell me how many people thought they looked good. And you tell me how many people are excited to see their next fights based on their last fight. It's about a little more than just winning is what I'm getting at. Not to say that winning isn't important, because it is. But even if you lose, so long as you put on a show... You know, a lot of times we have these conversations about the sport of boxing, and I think it gets lost on a lot of the fans that it's entertainment. Yeah. It's supposed to be entertaining. We get bogged down by all the familiar themes. Tired tropes. When more than anything, what you're watching is intended to entertain you. And so long as the people in attendance and the viewers at home are entertained that lends itself towards your future fights whether you win or lose in the case of Sonny Edwards yeah he lost to Bim but he showed a lot of heart and he never made himself hard to deal with in the build-up he proved to the fans more or less that he is about the big fights he wants them remember he was vigorously pursuing Julio Cesar Martinez who has now crossed over to the PBC side of things and when that didn't work out he fought Bam he said he wants the big fights the real fights and when he says that you can see that he means it that lends itself to his marquee value so long as Matchroom can keep getting him the opponents he's willing to fight the fights and just in keeping with the theme news at or around these weights another excerpt from Daisuke Seguria's sit-down interview with Naoya Inoue he was asked about fighting in Japan and not in America. He knew he said, nowadays, in this streaming era, if you are successful in Japan, you can make millions, even in the lighter divisions, yeah. which isn't characteristic of the lighter weights. Most of the time, most of the money in boxing was in more popular divisions, like the lightweight division, the welterweight division, middleweight, like heavyweight, heavyweight. Which is what makes Inui's ascent to popularity so unique, that he's become so popular in his own neck of the woods, they're talking about him all the way over here all the way in the west in america he knew he continued you can make millions even in the lighter weight divisions that's why stefan fulton came to japan and the big fights are easier to make in japan you have to remember that stefan fulton was the reigning champion unbeaten and unified he knew he was his mandatory challenger and you ask yourself why did Stefan go to Japan? Because Stefan's not popular enough in America to pay Inui what Inui uh. makes in Japan. Well, what about home field advantage? Well he could have dragged his feet and made it a haggling situation though if he did and you don't reach a deal with this guy by the deadline you know what happens? What? A purse bid. Uh. It goes to purse bid and if it goes to purse bid it's gonna be Ohashi Promotions versus PBC. Uh. If you're the PBC in this hypothetical scenario and what you want is for your fighter to have home field advantage, you have to pay to play. You're going to have to put a lot of money up because he knew he is worth a lot of money to Ohashi Promotions. He's worth a lot of money in Japan and you've got to try to beat them out. And all for what? So that Stefan Fulton doesn't have to travel? And all for what? For a fight that isn't as big in America as it is in Japan? And all for what? So that you could be on the hook whatever this fight costs you and hope that you can promote it to where you don't end up losing money so that you don't end up losing money on the show because as stated 
it's a bigger fight in Japan than it is in America. It generates more money in Japan than it does in America. So if you're asking yourself, why did Stefan Fulton travel to Japan if he was the reigning champion? It's because the fight was worth more money in Japan and there was more money in it for him in Japan. Al Heyman could have tried to win the rights to the fight but it would have been very expensive. Everyone wants to fight in Japan. I feel that things are changing in that direction. Originally, everyone wanted to fight in America because there was an opportunity to make big money thanks to a system like pay-per-view. But nowadays, Japan has become the stage that lighter weight class fighters aspire to compete in. And once again, he's right. When you're talking about atom weights or light flyweights, flyweights, super flyweights, bantam weights or super bantam weights, that's primarily an Asian market. Many Americans don't watch the lighter weights so why would you want to have a fight like that here anyway i remember that immediately after the stefan fulton fight floyd mayweather chimed in and he said that he would like for inui to fight here in america and he would like for him to have random blood and urine testing it's just fucking stupid if he's supposed to be money mayweather then surely he can understand why you do a fight where there's more money there's more money for a fight with inui in japan than there is in america he should be able to understand that the idea that he knew he has something to prove to the Westerners, something to prove to the Americans who don't even watch these divisions anyway. Get over yourself. Not that he knew he hasn't fought in America before, because he has. He fought in Carson, California. He fought in Las Vegas. He even fought in the UK. Random blood and urine testing. Floyd Mayweather knows what he was suggesting without saying it outright. You're suggesting that because he fights primarily out of Japan, he might be up to something. Does that mean that you were up to something? something because you primarily fought out of Las Vegas. No, he was only fighting out of Vegas because it was worth more money. Well, that's the same fucking reason he knew he's fighting out of Japan. Because if you're a bantamweight or a super bantamweight, there's more money in it for you in the Asian market, the Japanese market, the Japanese boxing scene where he's a star. Bigger star than any American super bantamweight. Americans are living in the past. Americans like Floyd Mayweather who harken back to a time when a lot of foreign fighters would have to to travel to America for opportunities, but the world is changing. There are some fighters that don't have to do that, like Naoya Inoue, like Anthony Joshua. You got a problem with these people having home field advantage? No, he does, because nobody likes their own medicine. Tough teddy. It's better for boxing as a whole that we have all these other emerging markets, like the UK market, the Japanese market, the Australian market, so get over yourself. He knew he doesn't have to fight here. He doesn't need Americans or to appease Americans to put money in his pocket. No more than you needed the Japanese to put money in yours.